Yeah. All right. Looks good, Molly. Thanks. I like it. Let me take a short video of our old wax melter here. First off, I need to say that there are some wax melters on the market today that would be considered nicer than this. This is just what I've had for a long time and we still use it. It works. My brother-in-law made this for me. He's a stainless steel man out in California, has a big shop with 20 employees. He's made all my tanks and gosh, he's made all the sinks in the building, all the anything that's stainless steel, he made it. So it's nice to have relatives that will give you the family discount and stuff like this. So Nathan's about ready to pour some wax and clean it up and we just thought we'd take a shot of it. So, uh, let's see, where do we start, Nathan? You got to empty out the, the liquids, don't you, in That's the right. bottom? Uh, in the melter, uh, the honey and water and whatever uh, might be in it sinks to the bottom. We have to get rid of all that you know, nasty stuff. So first thing I usually do is just drain that and get it out of the way. There's a cockpit in the bottom of the, uh, the melter here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I should mention at this point, this is a double jacketed tank. And that's kind of dark in there. Right now, it's uh, any honey or fluids that might have been present in the cappings that he put in there sink to the bottom. And uh, uh, wax is lighter than honey or water, so the wax floats on top and uh, any honey or water goes to the bottom. And it's minimal. We have a pretty good capping spinner that gets most of the fluids out. There's a, what is that, about a three-quarter, one-inch valve down there under the tank. Yeah, I believe it's a three-quarter. The bottom of the tank is slanted, so the fluids all kind of run towards this front. And then that valve right there is where he takes the wax out of. Because the wax um, stays higher, all the solids like slum gum and stuff sink to the bottom, and the wax coming out is always clean. And that looks pretty high, high up on the tank, but you have to keep in mind that not only is it double jacketed, but it has a, you know, kind of a slanted bottom too. Now, we used to use a heat gun to warm up that valve before he started because the wax would turn solid in the valve after being used. But now you've got an electric, uh, what's that, like a little electric blanket thing? This is like a little heating pad there. A heating pad? Mm -hmm. We picked that up online, or where Amazon. did we get that? Amazon. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you remember what it was called? If I'm not mistaken, it was just a heating pad. Just a little heating pad. In. Yeah, a little 110 current heating pad. It's got a little insulation there and wrapped up and it work, works really well. Yeah, it um, keeps that valve clear. Okay, well show us the process here. Right. So uh, now we got all the honey and stuff drained down. We're going to try to get all our good wax, which is right in this area here. Um, we do that because we don't want to disturb what's in the tank pot yet because it's just... Yeah, yeah, don't touch anything until you've gotten the wax out. Okay, so right off the bat, this is what's called, uh, what is that called? That's called a uh, flower, flower sack. sack, yeah. When you pick that up at Walmart in packages of uh, six or eight or a dozen or something. Mm -hmm. And it's simply called flower sack, right? That's right. Or a flower sack towel? Um, I believe so. Flower sack. Yeah, look, get that piece right there. Let's have a closer look at it. Okay. So this is, it's like a towel. I guess it would be considered like a kitchen towel or mm -hmm. something, but they call it flower sack. It's very close to a t-shirt. Yeah, a t-shirt would work too. But this stuff works great. And uh, so this is cut up. It was much larger uh, originally, right? That's right. So yeah, you okay. get to four, four of these pieces out of one. One towel. Mm -hmm. So do you use this piece over and over? Or I is it... do, I do, and it all depends, you know, how much uh, scum and trash I catch in it. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, I do try to change as much, much as possible. All right, show us the process. Okay. Pretty simple, this little jacket, the uh, heating blanket, does this real good, it starts, starts right up. Uh, at the very first pour, usually there's some trash on top also, but uh, that's where we catch all this trash here. Mm -hmm. And I try to pour slow. Okay. So is your valve a little clogged? It is a little clogged right now. Okay. 
Yeah, it'll take it a minute to open it. Yeah, as soon as the hot wax starts to flow, it'll break it loose. Mm -hmm. So that's just a kitchen strainer with that uh, flour sack over it. I know a lot of people use things like cheesecloth and uh, what else? An old t-shirt. Uh, Let's see what else could I use. Uh, some people use uh, nylon stockings. I used to use knee-high nylon stockings a long time ago. I would stretch two pieces over that. Um, but this this flower sack really is a trick. Works it, really well and it's cheap. It does just right. Yeah. So while that's beginning to pour, I want to show some blocks over here that are already finished. So it gives us a real clean block. We sell them in the store and we use them for candle making ourselves. Um, we do go through quite a lot of beeswax, more than we produce. We, we purchase pallets of it from other beekeepers. I think I've got a shot out in the warehouse I can show that. We sell a lot more wax than we make ourselves, especially with the candle making we do. Anyway, beeswax is a valuable commodity. Well, that's, would you hand me those uh, trays while that's pouring? I want to show what that is. You just get these at Walmart too. So I can get a close up of that. Um, there we go. You get these at Walmart, Nathan? Walmart, yes, sir. Okay. These end up being the perfect size for us. Okay. How long? Do, how long? How many um, months or whatever um, you do? You do this every day, we every have to day. say that. And I would say three <coughs> months and they're done. Uh, they just don't stick anymore and they start cracking okay. and stuff. Well, three months is pretty good considering you use them every day. Yeah, you know, a couple dollars a piece. You yeah. Definitely... I've used a lot of things. I've used Tupperware tubs and bread pans and those things work pretty good. We've, we found that in the store that uh, most people don't want a huge block. They want a block that weighs anywhere from 10 to 20 pounds maybe eight pounds, and, and those little trays uh, accomplish that. Well, this is interesting. I would have thought it would have broke loose by now. Hmm, maybe you got a chunk of slum in there or something? I know in the old days on our old wax melter, sometimes I'd have to ram a little rod in there to break it loose. High tech, high tech. This thing looks pretty ugly in here, and we'll explain it explain the process and well I guess I can explain it now. So we're looking at liquid wax right there inside and when he's done there'll be slum gum on the bottom and he, we have a square shovel he scrapes it up off the bottom and puts it up on this bench here and then it just drains and leaks for a day. Nathan's telling me he hasn't had to ram something in there in a really long time so he doesn't even have anything here. I used to have kind of a piece of quarter inch round stuff for cleaning out the valve. Okay, we just took some mechanics wire and twisted it up. That should do the trick. Gotta find the hole. Oh, there we go. There we go. There was a bunch of junk in there. Okay. And see, uh, oh, yeah. it kind of messed up my... Uh, so that block might have to be re-melted or something. Yeah. When that happens, I just make it where it'll come out and just redo it and send it back on through. Yeah. No rocket science here. Like I said earlier, there's a lot of wax melters that are more efficient than this one. This just happens to be what I did way back when. I used to have, what was it called? Better Way Wax Melter? It was a dry air wax melter. Do you remember that thing? It worked, but boy, this is a lot better than that. Better Way was, they were popular like I don't know, 30 years ago or something. Mm. Now they've got much better wax melters out there. This is a very good melter. Yeah, this thing works good. Gosh, it's just never does anything wrong. Of course, it's year after year after year. I think we had to replace that uh, electric heating element once. Yes, I did replace the element on it. Yeah. <laughs> Super easy to find. Super easy to change. Yeah. So I just let that stuff harden up and send it back through. Yeah, a lot of garbage in that. Yeah, oh yeah. This is gonna be beautiful. More better. This is Nathan's morning ritual every day. Should be around two hundred. Two hundred, okay. 
All right, that should get the wax up to 175 or something like that. This thing is water jacketed. It's got an uh, inner wall and an outer wall. It's about an inch thick between the walls. It just has this reservoir tube on the side. We never, ever add water to it. It doesn't use water at all. I often wondered if this stuff would make good fertilizer. I have no idea. It looks like something that might blend into the earth if you left it long enough. Smells wonderful. Smells very earthy. Interesting smell, kind of different than anything else. <coughs> Leave that up there for a day while the wax melter is running, and all that wax will run out. Yeah. I might get a better wax melter one day, but this one works. Kind of hard to spend thousands of dollars when what you got already works. Okay, so the wax is draining out nicely. By tomorrow, that'll be pretty dry. So uh, we spend all summer generating barrels of cappings, and then in the winter, it's not actually winter yet, but close enough, well, he melts them. We don't want to do this in the summer. We don't need to be creating all this heat in the summertime. Wait till it cools off. Pretty cool out there today, actually. This old wax melter has melted a serious amount of wax over the decades. If we were bigger beekeepers, I'd probably get one of those uh, wax melters where you set the whole barrel up in the heating box. Wouldn't have to do all this labor. I'd probably never go that far though. We don't. We're not that big. Well, this stuff will be hard by the morning. Comes out of those trays really easy. Okay. This is what we how we sell it in the store. We sell quite a bit. And let's see if we can get our price. This is our retail price. Of course, a lot of it goes into candles. Sell a lot of candles. More than I ever would have thought. Hi, Marilyn. Hey, Bob. <laughs> Marilyn's the candle maker these days, and she makes a serious amount of candles. Uh, she spends most of her time doing it. Even though she's one of the retail ladies, she's kind of pulled away most of the time making candles. She's got a ton of molds. There's even more than these. This isn't all of them, is it? No. Yeah. Okay. So Christmas is coming too. I don't know how you're going to keep up, honestly. I think I'm going to have to take a day just to do nothing but candles. Yeah. Like, can we maybe set you up in the back room? Yeah. Or I don't know. We're selling so many candles. I never expected it to do this. The quantity of candles that's leaving this place every day is staggering. Um, We've got to figure out how to up our game somehow. Anyway, Marilyn makes a lot of candles. We, we sell gift packages with candles. There's all kinds of stuff. This little thing sells pretty good, doesn't it, Marilyn? Yes, that one flies off the shelf. We cannot keep them made fast enough. Yeah, Christmas, that's going to go really good at Christmas. Right. Little ornaments, little bars. I mean, it just seems like anything you make out of beeswax sells. That's right. Of course, we put a lot of beeswax in all of our uh, soap. Um, what else? We got lip, lip balm. balm and ointments and uh, body butter and all that stuff. It's got beeswax in it. So she uses the same, um, what do you call this? A uh, flower, flower sack. sack towel to filter before she pours the wax. This is a little uh, wax melter. This is pretty cool. We got this from Candle Science and uh, it works. It's a double jacketed little wax melter. She just puts whole blocks in that thing. And um, so you, Dave bought you one of these little heater things for the valve, so that made a difference, didn't yes, it? Yes, because it was getting stopped up. And yeah. it works now. Before that, every morning when she started out, she'd have to use one of these guns to, to warm it up and get the wax flowing in that valve. So it's not rocket science. It's not hard. 
It's all about presentation. Marilyn does a really good job with the packaging. You're using these little uh, plastic packages. We have a nice little card on there. Little plastic packages. What do you call this string? That's raffia. Raffia, yeah, that's right, yeah. So, you can see over there all of our candles. And it's interesting, the ladies are really attracted to that. When they walk in the store, a lot of the women just walk right over to the candle shelf. Right. Candles is a good thing, you know, it's for asthma, allergies. Oh, yeah. Beeswax um, is nice. Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a great day. <laughs> Who chose the radio station today, Marilyn? Me. You? Yeah. You like this old rock and roll? Yeah, it's oldies. Oldies. Yeah, it's an oldies channel, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Usually it's country or something like that in here. Anyway.